Hello guys and welcome to episode 4 of the Cholton Athletic Career Mode. Now, last time, if you remember, we got a suspension for our new signing Lanes despite his pretty good form in the first few games that he's played for us. If you also remember, Igor Vettikelli scored a last minute winner to defeat Peterborough, one of our main promotion rivals for this season. We also experienced a little bit of a glitch and the transfer window slammed shut. But all of that is behind us now. As you can see, we are third in the table and we are looking to move forward onto the rest of September's games. So without further ado, let's get into episode four. And look over there on the right hand side of your screen. I've just seen this. Lyle Taylor grabs the September player of the month. Let's try and refine that because it's just gone from us. Here we go. The first month of the entire career mode save file. And we have seen our striker, our number nine, our new sign in Lyle Taylor grab the September player of the month award. That is really good. And hopefully we can have a few more of those dotted throughout the season. Fair play to you, Lyle. So it's September the 8th and Cholton have a home fixture against Wickham Wanderers. So we are going to be at the Valley. We are going to have to drop Lanes, who is suspended, as we did discuss at the beginning of this episode. And we are going to bring in Mark Marshall. I wasn't sure whether to bring in Marshall or Reeves, but I have ended up going for Mark Marshall. As you can see as well, Carlin Grant and Lyle Taylor on the best of form. They are looking very, very good as a, a striking partnership this season. So without further ado, let's sim this match. We're at home against Wickham and I think that we might get a little result here. Hopefully we can win it at least by a goal. They've had three draws in their last three games as we saw there in the little preview. Carlin Grant only takes four minutes to put Charlton 1-0 up and we are en route to get a win in this game. Wickham may reply though, so we can't get too complacent. Akin Fenwa there, I think this game actually was 3-2 in real life, wasn't it? And Akin Fenwa uh, didn't actually make much of an impact in the game. Taylor has scored a goal. The two strikers are really, really showing that this partnership is golden. Tariq Fosu getting in on the action as well, and we have 10 minutes left, and it is going to be a 3-0 uh, final score against Wickham in EFL League One and that is going to be a real real confidence booster for the squad and it shows we don't need our new signing Lanes. we've got plenty of players and depth in the squad in order to come in and do a job unfortunately though I've just seen this here Colin Grant has suffered a broken collarbone and will be out for about eight weeks wow that is a long time that's two months so that is going to be a fair portion of fixtures that Carlin Grant misses there. Luckily, though, we have Vettikelli, Ward, Clark and a Jose all waiting on the sidelines to get into the action. But it is unfortunate for Carlin Grant because we are uh, going to miss a few months or a few weeks of him trying to train himself to get his rating up. So that's a bit unfortunate. But like I said, plenty of depth in the squad to come in and replace him. So if you look down there at the standings, we are top of the table with 16 points in seven games. Scunthorpe United behind us with 14 in seven and Sunderland, Wickham, Luton and Gillingham. Gillingham surprisingly actually making up the rest of the top six. We do have this game against Bradford like I said and this is going to be a very very difficult one I think. I am going to go in and play it so let's get into that one. Here we go then those are the kits we're going with and this is the lineup we're going with. We will go over this a little bit more in detail as the match loads up but I am feeling quite confident off the back of that 3-2 win as my playing form goes against Peterborough and yeah yeah, Bradford, like I said, going to be a very difficult opponent and I'm looking forward to this one. So here we go. This is the Bradford City lineup. Wilson in goal, Riley, Sherwood, Knight, Percival and Chicks and an extra Charlton player at the back. In midfield, they've got O'Brien, Akpan, their own version of Reeves, not Ben Reeves, obviously. And they've got Payne and Seydorf as well. And then up front by himself, it is Jones, the number 19. So yeah, a pretty solid league one side as it goes. Let's now turn our attention to the Charlton side. Here we go then. Dylan Phillips in goal, Deke still at right back, Bauer and Pierce at centre-back, our two main centre-backs, I'd say. Lewis Page comes back in at left-back. Marshall at right wing. Forster Kasky and Arebo in central midfield with Tariq Fosu on the left. Igor Vettikelli comes in to replace the injured Carlin Grant and Lyle Taylor, the player of the month in League One for September, or August actually, sorry, does make another start for the Reds. And despite the fact that I'm calling them the Reds, we are actually playing in our white kit as the Bradford team go into a huddle to try and, I don't know, create some sort of team talk to defeat Charlton, but it is going to be very, very hard for the Bradford team to come on top of the current league leaders. I'm feeling good. 
and Cholton replicate actually the team talk and here we go I am feeling good about this one and I think we are going to get the win let's see though can't get too cocky Mark Marshall over here with the throw on he's going to give the ball into Forster Kasky's feet he does well to hold off the Bradford City man and gives it back to Marshall with a lovely through ball lots of pace Mark Marshall so he is going to be a nice player to use and as he tears through the middle of the Bradford City defence he is going to find a through ball here to Tariq Fosu Tariq Fosu just loses the ball from underneath his feet just as he set out to take the shot oh no Page has lost out to Jones here really nice defending but he doesn't actually manage to get the ball Jason Pierce comes onto the edge of the box to Reeves who fires a shot in towards Phillips don't know what happened to uh, I think that was Patrick Bauer in the middle there as that shot came in but we are going to lose the ball we have actually plugged it up with a rebo let's get on an attack and it's actually a Bradford City attack as Seydorf comes forward now whips across ball lots of space for Reeves back to Reeves and eventually the shot comes in Dylan Phillips palms it away at his near post and they are hammering the Charlton goal at the moment Bradford in the opening 20-25 minutes another corner now they've got a chance to put this in and away at the near post from Mark Marshall Reeves getting a lot of joy down this right hand side for Bradford and uh, maybe Page needs to be a bit on his game he hasn't actually managed to pull off a good cross there but Reeves is going to be the man that anything's going to come from if Bradford do manage to get a goal here Jones just whips in a ball here Headed away, Forster Kasky, nice little, I think that might have been a nutmeg there, uh, but a pass to Mark Marshall. Mark Marshall manages to beat the uh, Bradford defender, loads of space out here, and it is going to be Tariq Fosu again. Can he keep the ball this time? It looks like he can. Gives the ball over here to Mark Marshall again. Mark Marshall's going to dink in a little cross. Nobody in there. And uh, away it goes for a corner. We have got a corner, but Mark Marshall had no options there, really. Pierce, Pierce now dancing around. And Arebo this time, his turn to... Try and get past some of the Bradford players. Inside, that's got to be a goal. Oh, it's a great save. I think it was Marshall who uh, ended up shooting. But unfortunately, it might have been Vetter Kelly, actually. But unfortunately, it wasn't a great shot. I'm actually going to do something right now, which was recommended to me in the comments to my memory. And that is to turn off the shot power. I don't know if I can actually do that from the game menu. I will try and do it, though. Let's have a look. So I think this is the FIFA trainer. We're going to hide it. And time finishing... Uh, I don't want to turn time finishing off. But I just don't want the marker on. Uh, for now, I won't turn time. I won't turn timed finishing off. I'll keep it on, and hopefully, turning off the FIFA trainer and pressing hide on that will get rid of the little bar that comes up. Corner comes in. It's not a bad one. It goes well away from Pierce. Really well met there. If Sherwood gives the ball to Reeves into Akpan. Akpan sends out wide one little dink, and it's away. Don't know where Dylan Phillips was there, but that is half time, and we are we are getting our goal battered a little bit, but we also are having our fair share of attacks here. Goalless into the half-time break, but Cholton can get three points out of this one if we put our minds to it. Seydorf coming down the left here, puts a ball in. It's a great header and it just goes wide from Reeves. I've said that he is the danger man for Bradford 100% right now. And uh, that header just beat, I think, Lewis Page to the ball, unfortunately. It might have been Bauer, I'm not sure. But either way, a little bit more of an aerial threat from the Cholton man who was trying to defend that would have been good. Free kick from Bradford, though, given away stupidly. Lyle Taylor's looking to return the ball and get Cholton on an attack here. Falls to Kasky. Finds a ball over here to Vettikelli. Vettikelli to Taylor. Taylor's going to find a nice through ball. Oh, cut out by Chickson. The ex Cholton left back making a great vital interception there. Won the ball back, though. It's going to be Vettikelli and Taylor linking up. Taylor, player of the month. Is he going to score? Oh, I can't believe that's just gone wide. That was so unfortunate. Lyle Taylor coming so, so close there. Look at this. He had lots and lots of space to shoot into. I think it might even have just clipped the post there, but unfortunately no goal for Charlton. So I also received a comment on episode three that did say I should experiment with a 4-3-3. So that's what we're going to do now. 60 minutes have been played in this match and I feel like I need to change something. So that is the thing that I am going to change right now. Jones. Pokes the ball to O'Brien. We're just hoping not to concede here, but Bradford can string passes together. Here comes Akpan. Akpan digs a little ball in there. Phillips decides not to come for it. It's Jones! And no way! Phillips was a bit of a melt in that situation because he came out and then he just trotted back as the cross came in. And number 19's the lone striker Jones gets the goal for Bradford to take them 1-0 up and only 18 minutes to try and rectify this scoreline now. Bradford fans loving it, throwing their arms about, arms everywhere. Nice ball from Akpan, poor defending again from Lewis Page and just tucked into the back of the net by the number 19. Scaddle with a ball in here, loads of space, where is Lewis Page? Where is Lewis Page? Honestly, look at the space that he had there. It was an outrageous finish from the angle, but it was a good one. And Lewis Page has just not been very good in this game at all. He's lost headers. 
and uh, defensively he's just been all over the place. Where was he? Number seven, lots of space for him to cross in the first place and just nobody there to mark him at the back post and of course he's going to stick that in. I mean it was a good finish but when you have that amount of space and time to think about what you're going to do, of course you're going to put that in the back of the net and Reeves the target man, the dangerous man that I said from, from minute one in this game, or from early on in this game at least, has made it 2-1. And we've given the ball straight away from kickoff. This is not a good game for Charlton. Nice corner there. That's got to be a goal. Oh, is that off the line? I think that was off the line from the Bradford defender. And can we get a goal at least for a little bit of a consolation in this game? It's going to be the left foot of Deke still. Headed. Oh, I thought that was going to be a goal from Mark Marshall. Don't know why I went for the header actually from outside the box, but it turned out to be all right. The number seven glanced a really nice header towards goal. And it just went wide of the post. And did the keeper have that covered? I'm not sure. Do we have one more chance here to try and get a goal? I think we might do. It's going to be Veta Kelly. Veta Kelly, no. He's tackled and that is the full-time whistle. And our second 2-0 loss in this career mode whilst playing world-class on the new gameplay in FIFA 19 is actually reasonably difficult in my opinion. And uh, yeah, Bradford played really well there. Cholton didn't actually. I felt like when we lost against Sunderland, we actually played well. Whereas in this game, I feel like we had a bit of a stinker. I don't feel like anybody really played played too well so that's unfortunate not what we wanted to see and I doubt that we have maintained our place at the top of the league one leaderboard now yeah we had less possession less shots less shots on target and our highest rated player was Mark Marshall everybody else pretty much got sixes Pierce, Jose and Veta Kelly and Arebo as well uh, all got sevens Fosu had a really poor game again Lyle Taylor pretty average everybody else not so great so yeah yeah, we have to gonna, we're going to have to bounce back from this. But if we have a look at the uh, League One scores, do any stand out here? Gillingham do pick up another win. So that means they're going to be uh, up and around us points-wise points wise now. I think Barnsley as well. And they have expired. And Scunthorpe do go above us. And Sunderland catching up. Only one point behind now. Let's see what our next game is. And we have got a couple of rating increases. It's Dylan Phillips who goes from a 67 to a 68. And Anthony Deke still who goes from a 65 to a 66. Fosu and Aribo still are at 68. And I am just in the uh, injury absence of Colin Ahern Grant or Colin Grant. I am going for Masco this time to train to try and get him up to like a 60-ish rating and then he can be our backup left back for this season. So to end off this episode, can we bounce back with a home victory against Plymouth? I'm going to sim this one and let's see if the boys can muster up a win to bounce back from a pretty poor 2-0 defeat there. Let's hope so. And uh, we are kicking off now and underway. Lewis Page with a yellow card. I've stuck and kept faithful with Lewis Page despite a poor performance. I don't think Maskell's quite ready to come in and get too many games yet. We're approaching half time and nobody scored. And actually Taylor scores the number nine for Plymouth to put them up. And he's actually scored twice. 2-0 to Plymouth. Our Taylor scores this time. Lyle Taylor. And it's 2-1 to Plymouth now. This is a really, really poor result if this stays this way. And 90 minutes are over and the referee blows for full time and we've actually lost at the Valley to Plymouth Argyle. Not what we wanted to see at all to end this episode. But guys, make sure you leave a like on this one if you want to see me try and bounce back from this in episode 5. It will be coming very, very shortly, probably tomorrow. So make sure you stay posted for that. I am hungry and I just have a fire in my belly now to try and win the next game because this was a pretty poor two games in the, the, the game we just played and the game we just simmed. So make sure you leave a like on this one. Make sure you subscribe if you are new. And also make sure you check out all the other FIFA 19 content that is coming on the channel. Take care, everybody. I'll see you in the next episode. And sweet.